Not too long ago, when you wanted to scrape a website, you would go online, find a proxy provider, and get yourself some data center proxies to use with your web scraper, and everything would be great. The data would come back, and you could continue with your life. Unfortunately, web scraping today isn't as simple. Websites and anti-scraping technologies have gotten more sophisticated and are increasingly able to identify and ban suspicious requests from web scrapers. This leads to an explosive growth in demand for residential proxies, a type of proxy that tilts the balance of power back in favor of the web scraper and makes it much harder for websites to stop you accessing the public data on their site. So that begs the question, what are residential proxies and what makes them so powerful? What are residential proxies? Residential proxies are proxies that route their traffic through someone's home or office internet router, not a data center, making it look like the request is coming from someone's house or local business. Residential proxies differ from data center proxies in the fact that the underlying IP address is owned by an internet service provider and has been assigned to a specific device such as a computer, mobile phone, or tablet. When to use residential proxies. Residential proxies have a lot of benefits over data center proxies that make them a great option in certain situations. But they also have some drawbacks, namely speed and cost. Residential proxies are significantly more expensive than data center proxies upwards of 10 times more expensive, and they often have higher latencies too. As a result, residential proxies shouldn't be your go-to proxy option. Instead, you should focus on using them if you encounter one of the following situations. Getting blocked and antibots. The number one reason why you should consider using residential proxies over data center proxies is when your data center proxies are continuously getting blocked by the website you're trying to scrape. Businesses are increasingly starting to use more and more sophisticated anti-scraping technologies like Cloudflare, Datadome, and PerimeterX to detect and block people scraping their website. These anti-scraping technologies use a number of request and behavior profiling techniques to detect and ban requests from certain IPs. The advantage of using residential proxies is that it makes it much harder for these anti-scraping technologies to determine if a request is coming from a scraper or from an ordinary user. So the success rates are typically much higher when compared to data center proxies. Country and city level geotargeting. Another advantage of using residential proxies is that they are great when you need to make your requests look like they are coming from a specific country, city, or even postcode, something that is very hard to achieve with data center proxies. Because residential proxies are real IP addresses in people's homes and businesses, they give a huge diversity in the places they are. As a result, some proxy providers, like Bright Data, have been able to index all their residential IPs to specific countries and cities, and allow their users to decide from where their requests come from. Bots and automation. Residential proxies also really have an edge in the area of automated bots that simulate the behavior of real users to log into websites and take actions, be it buy a sneaker from an e-commerce store during a sale or automate a Facebook or Instagram account. Requests from static residential proxies are much harder to detect than data center proxies when the bot is logging into the website so they are a great choice for these use cases. How to use residential proxies. Residential proxies are very easy to use. Most providers give you access to the residential proxy pools through a single endpoint proxy, and they manage the selection and management of those proxies on their end, meaning you just need to send your requests to a proxy endpoint like Bright Data's. They will route your request through their residential proxy network for you and return the HTTP response after the request has been completed. 
Integrating this proxy endpoint into your web scrapers is very easy, as it normally is just a parameter for you to add to the request. No need to worry about rotating proxies or managing bands, etc. Here is a simple example using Python. Most other web scraping tools like Scrapebox, Appify, Phantom Buster, etc. all support this type of proxy integration out of the box, making it a very simple setup. Where do residential proxies come from? Where proxy providers get their residential proxies can be a bit opaque. Some proxy providers treat it as a closely held secret, whilst others are very open about where they get their proxies. In truth, there are five main ways proxy providers get their residential proxies. Free VPNs, proxy SDKs in apps and Chrome extensions, paid bandwidth products, device proxy farms, and proxy reselling. If you would like to learn more about this topic, then we have written a whole guide on where do residential proxies come from. The legality of residential proxies. When proxy providers first started offering residential proxies to users, there were legitimate questions over how they acquired access to these residential IP addresses, and do they have permission from the owners to use them. Thankfully, in the last few years, things have significantly moved out of the shadows, and the proxy provider industry has become much more transparent about how they get their residential proxies and how they have explicit permission to use them. Sites like Honeygrain and PacketStream pay users to let them use their IP addresses as a residential proxy, and then they sell access to this proxy network to web scrapers and other proxy providers. More web scraping guides. In this guide, we went through what are residential proxies, why you should use them, and how you can get started using them. If you would like to learn more about web scraping in general, then be sure to check out the web scraping playbook or check out one of our more in-depth guides. As always, thank you so much for watching, and please check out our YouTube channel for more videos about web scraping. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe.